48 chefs from across the UK are putting their reputations on the line in a bid to become professional Master Chef champion. Another six hopefuls are competing to impress Judge Greg Wallace, renowned chef Monica Galletti, and Michelin starred Marcus Waring. Today, it's all about proving my skills, my passion. It's a career-defining moment. I've got some new ideas and new techniques, and uh, I've got imagination. I've got all my recipes ready to go, and hopefully I can blow them out the water. <laughs> the competition is back on. I want bold, I want brilliant, and I want beautifully cooked food. Who is going to emerge as our next champion? We have six chefs outside waiting to perform a skills test. Marcus, three of them, obviously going to do yours. Yep. What are you going to get them to do? I'm going to ask our chefs to make us an omelette Arnold Bennett. An omelette Arnold Bennett is a flat omelette served in a dish. I'm going to add a little bit of a twist. I'm going to take away the smoked haddock that normally goes with this dish, uh, and I'm going to ask our chefs to use crab meat instead. Uh, it's got Gruyere cheese. It's served with a hollandaise sauce over the top and gratinated under the grill. How long have they got for your Arnold Bennett? I'm going to give them 20 minutes. Right, OK. Let's see how it's done. So for the hollandaise, the first thing I need to do is get the white wine vinegar reduction. It's just basic white wine vinegar, a couple of bay leaves, and some white peppercorns. So I'm going to use three egg yolks. I'm just going to start whipping them up. They've got to know how to make a hollandaise, surely. Oh, absolutely. I don't think that would be a problem. Hmm. As you start to whisk the eggs, let's be very careful. Too hot, and it will start to cook the egg yolks. We're looking for the ribbon stage, which is when you lift it up, you see the ribbons in the bowl. My white wine vinegar is now reduced by half. I'm going to pour that into there. Now we need to start adding our clarified butter. You've got to keep whisking. What you need to do now is a little spoon of vinegar. And that automatically just lets that sauce right down. That allows me now to incorporate some more butter. Do you know the history? Did Arnold Bennett, the author, order it in the Savoy? That's it. And it's become famous. You worked at the Savoy, didn't you? I did, yeah. That yeah, was one of the first jobs I had in, in London. And for part of my time, I worked on what they was the potage and the egg section, so I've made a lot of these over the years. So this is where a chef's intuition is going to have to come into the equation. So now it's just about getting to the right consistency and taste. Yep. So there it is, the hollandaise. So now what we're going to do is uh, pick our crab. It's when the chefs are brutal and, and really smash into the, the crab claw that you get bits of shell everywhere. As you can see, Marcus just gave it one big tap and, and it was done. You're going to have to get your, your hands in here in case any shell slipped through. I'm going to add some brown crab meat into there. That brown crab meat, you need that strength, don't you? Because the crab's got to be able to compete with hollandaise and, of course, with a Gruyere cheese. That's right. And what we've also got on the bench here is some lightly whipped double cream. Believe it or not, it actually takes the richness of the hollandaise down a little bit. Right, I'm going to make the omelette now. So I'm going to use four eggs, give the eggs a good whisk. Butter's foaming, just nicely coming up to temperature. It's not too hot. Put that into there. Now you can't stop. You've got to keep the process going. So you're making uh, almost like a half-scrambled, half-omelette type mixture in the pan here transfer it into this serving dish. Now we add the crab meat, mm. some Gruyere cheese, and then what we do is we just pour on our hollandaise. Oh! It's laid up, it's ready to go. Now I've just got to glaze it. So that just takes a couple of seconds to brown it. That's why you can't walk away from it. And there you have it. I'll, I'll burn it with crab meat. Whoa! Isn't it beautiful? The chefs are waiting. Yep. If they can make a hollandaise, if they can handle a crab, we're in for a treat. It's a simple dish, but it's full of skill. Get him in, boys. First in is Christian, the chef patron of a Brighton pop-up who's been cooking for 15 years. 
When I was 20, I moved to France to be a pro snowboarder. As it happens, I wasn't very good at snowboarding, so I started uh, washing dishes in the local hotel, and then I realised I really liked cooking. I uh, worked in hotels and restaurants in France for about 10 years. I've got my own business in Brighton now. I love it. I'm my own boss, and I can design my own dishes and come up with some really cool stuff. I don't get nervous, so I don't get embarrassed. I believe in what I do. I really think I've got a good chance to win this competition, so let's have a crack at it. Christian, I'd like you to make us a omelette Arnold Bennett okay. using crab meat. OK, cool. Uh, I've made it with smoked haddock before, so uh, crab meat will be a new one for me. Well, sounds like you know what to do. 20 minutes, off you go. Next up, I'm going to make the sauce that goes on the top. I'm going to use some white peppercorns, yep. a little bit of white wine vinegar. OK. Put a bay leaf in there. I'm going to take the egg yolks. I'm going to slowly cook them in a bain marie. Uh, whiskey, whiskey. Do you like an Arnold Bennett? I do, actually. It's so rich and delicious. But I think sometimes you could need a little bit of a lay down afterwards. Christian, you've got six minutes. Better get a move on then, like, Absolutely, uh, chef. So I want to do this properly, because I obviously don't want to split it. I've got a bit of a spoon fetish, actually. Spoon fetish? Yeah, I've always got to have lots of spoons at work. I've actually got a tattoo of a spoon somewhere on my body. Where is it? Uh, somewhere where the sun doesn't see. <laughs> <laughs> my mum and dad don't know about it, so now <laughs> they do. They do now. <laughs> How much longer have I got? Uh, three minutes. You're gonna have to be pretty lively now. Uh, keep an eye on yeah, that yeah, if I was you. That, that's pretty strong. Run, Christian! Woo! <laughs> you done? That's it. Just in time. Cut that fine, yeah. Good start. Fantastic approach. You've got cheese in there, you've got the white crab meat, you put the cream into the hollandaise, you put the omelette under the salamander. Walking away was a dangerous thing to do. <laughs> that was seconds away from being black. Listen, I'm happy. I can taste the crab, the tang of the cheese. It's really, really creamy. You, you inspire confidence, Christian. Christian, it's delicious. It's gooey, it hasn't overcooked. I think great effort. You've done a fantastic job for the first chef in the kitchen today, so well done you. Thank you, guys, thank you. <laughs> that was intense. <laughs> I was really lucky. It's a dish I've done a hundred times before. And so it's good to hear people say nice things about you at the end of the day. 20-year-old Neil has spent the last year working in a fine dining kitchen of a mid-Wales hotel. My father's a chef as well, see, and my great-grandfather used to be a chef throughout the school career. Uh, I couldn't imagine doing anything different. Being a young chef, it can be quite difficult in the kitchen. People underestimate you when you come in at uh, 19, 20 years old, you know, into a fine dining kitchen. But I think that's just the best time to show what you're capable of. First impressions are key. I think you can judge a person in the first 10 seconds of meeting them, and I think that's going to be crucial in this competition, is just getting a good first impression, showing them you can produce good food. How are you doing, Neil? Very well, thank you. A bit nervous? A little bit. <laughs> Neil, I would like you to make us an omelette en Bennett using crab meat. You're going to give you 20 minutes. Off you go. Where are you from, Neil? Um, I'm South African born originally, um, and I'm living in Wales at the moment. Because you, your accent's partly Welsh and partly South African. I did six months in Australia as well, so that's possibly where some of that comes from as well. You've had five minutes, you've prepped your crab. What's next? Um, I'm going to start with the holidays. You 
You doing okay? <sighs> Holiday just slipped just, my mind. Uh, Neil, just take a breath. You can do this. You know holidays, all right? Sorry, can I start that again? Because that's going to be my legs. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. Just... Okay, you've still got 12 minutes. You can still do this, okay? Neil, yes. what are you doing? Making holiday sauce. And then I'm going to add the clarified butter and the egg, and the egg, egg. Into the cream? Yes, sir. Is that the way to make holidays? Think, think, think. Think, think. Chef. think. think. Take, take a step. Second to last egg, so you've got to get this one right. You've had 10 minutes, but you've got 10 minutes left, so you can do this. Is that it? Is it working? It is working, you chef. happy now? Feel better? Yes, chef. Much better, chef. All right, you're going to get a move on. You've still got to make the omelette. Time's up. It's all right. It's over. Listen, Neil, you're not the first chef in here to, to have a hard time in the skills test. You've worked your way through uh, what I could only describe as sort of a, a mental cooking block. Yeah. Uh, I am concerned the egg isn't cooked in the hollandaise. The whole dish is covered in the hollandaise sauce, so I'm, I feel like I really do not want to eat this dish, unfortunately. You started off really well, and, and I don't know what happened. Complete panic uh, took over. But you got there, you gave us a badly made hollandaise and a badly made omelette. You can't afford to lose your head when things go wrong, uh, but I like that you kept trying. Put a line under it, forget about it and then you've got a point to prove in the next round, and only you can do that. Thank you. I think it's probably the worst first impression you could possibly make. Um, I didn't have a clue what I was doing, uh, and it all just fell to pieces then. Last to face Marcus's test is 35-year-old Andy, head chef of a luxury hotel in Bristol. I became a chef purely because my mum and dad, they had a Chinese restaurant or a Chinese takeaway, as you say. Um, just enjoyed it. That's why I guess I've gone into chef into following their footsteps, but not into the Chinese side, into the more fine dining, should we say. It is, it is pressure, but I think I'm quite organised and quite structured and I'm never going to say no to a challenge, so I'll only try my best. Uh, Andy, what I'd like you to make for us is an omelette on a Bennett uh, using crab meat. OK. Got it? Chef. Off you go. So I'm going to make a reduction, quickly. Uh, white wine, uh, bay leaf, peppercorns. Made hollandaise before? Chef. How long ago? I like to say a few days ago. Is that for pleasure or was that at work? Uh, yeah. No, that's at work. At work? Yeah. Is it looking all right? Yeah. So, Andy, what made you enter the competition? Um, to try and test myself, to be honest. Um, and to make my two little girls proud of me. Right, Andy. Chef. You've got seven minutes left. Holiday sauce is made, crabs picked. Gonna make um, an omelette now. What have you just done? So, brown meat's gone with eggs. Was that a mistake, cracking the eggs into the yeah. crab meat? Yeah. You have to go with it now, right? Yes, yeah. The joys. You've got just three minutes. Chef. <sighs> Come on, Andrew, take your time. So sorry. Come on. A 
OK? All done? All done. Your hollandaise is nice. It's a decent hollandaise. It's creamy and it's acidic. It's good. The, the omelette is odd because it's not egg omelette with crab added. It's a kind of cromlet. Andy, even though you put the eggs into the brown crab meat, if you put more egg through it, that would have saved it. But what we have here is just crab meat with a yeah. bit of egg through it. Sort of grainy. It definitely tastes of crab, but it's not a nice omelette, which is a real shame. It's not the best uh, omelette. You understood the processes, you think you just got a, a step ahead of yourself. I'm sure you're full of regret, but next time, it's going to be your dish. Thank you. Listen, the hollandaise was the hardest bit, mm. and he did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a bit deflated, to be honest. But we'll see what happens next round in my signature dish, and hopefully I'll do better. We've seen some of the chefs attempt your skills test, Marcus. Monica, now your skills test. Beautiful array of stuff. What are you going to get them to do? I would like our chefs to make a layered dessert with puff pastry, some of these berries, and a vanilla mousseline. What is a mousseline? Well, you should know. You've eaten many of them <laughs> over the years. It's normally the filling you get in, in some shoe desserts, you know, or puff pastry milfoys as well. The base is a creme patisserie, which is cooked out, and then what whips it up into a mousse is the addition of butter in two different stages. How long have they got to make it? Our chefs have 20 minutes. Whoa! It's pud time. The first thing they need to do is to make a creme patisserie. Every chef I expect to know how to do this. All right. Everything has been weighed out for them. OK, so if they know the order in which to put it together, we're away. They should be fine. So milk, vanilla in a pan. In the bowl, I've got the flour and the sugar. Egg yolks. OK, and I'm just whisking it all up. What's the difference between a creme pat and a custard? Where is a custard you can pour? You can't pour a creme pat. It's going to be set. That needs to go back in the pan. So I'm looking for this to come together. It's like a thick paste. So as it starts to come up in temperature, it'll start to slowly thicken and get thicker and thicker and thicker, but you need to keep it on the stove to cook that flour out. OK, so to the hot mix, I want to add the cold butter to it. So whipping butter into the creme pat, that makes the creme pat light, that turns that into a mousse. This physically looks hard work. Oh, trust me, it is. <laughs> it's good. A bit of elbow grease, never hurt anyone. So, cooling stage. Ice bath is essential. To really lighten it, you now need to whip in some softened butter. And that's the cream I see between my layers of pastry and a milfoil. Yes. Our chefs have been given the pre-cooked puff pastry. I'm cutting circles with mine. They can do whatever shape they want. So now it's just uh, assembling my, my dessert. Our chefs can now let their creativity run wild, can't they? So being very careful. Ooh. Crowning glory. There we go. Look at very that. Careful. And then I'm just finishing it with some pretty petals. There you have it, guys. This is my layered puff pastry dessert with some berries and my vanilla mousseline. That is so pretty. I love the way you can see the waves of the vanilla mousseline. Looks lovely. The key thing here is getting this mousse right and understanding when you're meant to add this butter in. Bring them in. Let them have a go. You ready? I'm ready. I hope they are. First in for Monica's test is sous chef Olivia, who has worked at a five-star London hotel for three and a half years. 
got a team of around 60 chefs in the kitchen. We're doing around 1,000 covers a day, including our banqueting. We get a lot of VIP guests, and that's a lot of our kind of sous chef role. It's about taking a request and making sure that the guest is the happiest they can possibly be. When I first started off, all I wanted to be was a pastry chef. As I actually started to kind of get into the industry, I completely changed my course and went into the hot kitchen. I love the, the speed, the heat, everything. Olivia, welcome. Excited? Yeah, really excited. What I would like you to do is to make a vanilla cream mousseline and use it to make a layered dessert with some of the puff pastry here and decorate it how you want. You have 20 minutes. Off you go. So I'm just going to make a kind of custard base um, and then I'm going to add the flour and then I'm just going to cook it out and thicken it as I go. Brilliant! How long have you been a chef? Uh, I've been a chef for about six years. Kind of when I became 18, I went to do a ski season, um, cooking for around eight to ten guests every week. So I was writing my own menus and um, I realised that actually all I wanted to do was cook. Coming up to halfway. Yeah. Ten minutes left. Yeah. Are you happy with where you are? Yeah, I'm happy. Just going to wait for this custard to thicken. It's thickening slowly now. And then I'm going to incorporate the cold butter um, to try to cool the mix. And now I'm going to go over ice and incorporate the rest of the butter. Olivia, what sort of consistency are you looking for? Um, I'm looking for a pipeable thick consistency. Hoping that the ice and the butter will thicken up. Everything now depends on the thickness of your cream, right? Yes. Cream not thick enough to pipe, right? It's not quite thick enough, no. Do what you can. Are you done? Yes. How was that, Olivia? Well, obviously, the mousseline cream hasn't set as much as I'd have liked it to. Do you understand why it's not set? Uh, I think I didn't cook the custard out enough. That is exactly it. You needed to really whisk that creme patisserie on the heat. That's what thickens the, the creme patisserie. So this is the result. We have a really runny custard. But you knew where you went wrong. So that gives me a bit of faith in you. And I think you're going to come back to really showcase what you're about in the next round. For me, unfortunately, the, the dish is just flat, you know. It's supposed to be rich and thick and light and fluffy, and it's just not there. Listen, it's everything I wanted, all the flavours I wanted, vanilla, <laughs> sugar, fruit, pastry, just not the texture, right? We'll see you in another round. Thank you. Thank you. It's definitely the most pressure I've ever experienced. Even though I have made uh, mousse and cream before, it's difficult when, you know, you're kind of being put on the spot like that. Next is Norfolk-born Michael, the 29-year-old head chef of a countryside gastropub. In my last job, I worked my way up from CDP to a head chef and I was there for eight years. And now I've just taken on my new head chef role. I like to cook home cooked food, but put a twist on it. So when you eat it, it's wow factor, but it's very hearty and you leave there wanting more, really. I like a challenge. All through my life, I've had challenges to get through. So I'm used to it. I never thought I'd be a head chef and I got there. So now I can go to the next level, see if I can win a competition. Service table 10, please. Uh, Michael, I would like you to make us a vanilla creme rousseline and use it to build a layered dessert with some of the puff pastry there. OK, I've never done a mousseline before, so... Yeah. Have you made uh, creme patisserie before? Uh, nope. OK. Have you made custard before? Yeah, I made custard before. Right. So, like a custard, but with the addition of flour to thicken your mousseline. Yep. And butter. 20 minutes, Michael. Brilliant. Off you go. 
how are you making your creme patisserie then? So you've got the milk and the vanilla so, on. No, so I'll add my egg. <laughs> I guess that's wrong, but never been around pastry much. I guess I've only done stuff I've been taught or learnt, so I've never had to do creme pack, because I've probably never pushed myself to do that. So, how did you feel when you realised this was going to be a pastry challenge? My mind went blank, so I guess I've just got to put together something for you to try and hope it works. What's in this pan that you're whisking? So, there is milk, egg and vanilla in there, and the sugar. Right. And in the other pan? That is now the flour going into the... Into the butter? Yeah. So you're making a roux? Yeah. I'm making a roux to then thicken up with the creme pat and the custard then to make the creme pat, I think. Oh, this isn't going too well, is it? But I'll keep going. What got you into cooking in the first place? Uh, my foster mum. Uh, she taught me how to cook and be myself, really, cos I was quite a bad boy. I think without cooking, I don't know where I'd be, really, so... What do you plan to do with the chocolate? So, the chocolate's just going to finish it on the top, so I've got a bit of chocolate going through. Are you done? Yeah. Well done. So, listen, Michael, really tough to get this right when you've not been taught the pastry basics. What you've done is you've cooked everything in a pan and then you made a roux with the flour and the butter. That, that wasn't right. And even when you put it together, it wasn't even cooked. It was, it was raw. MasterChef is tough, OK? You need to have the basics, so you're going to have to go back, do some quick learning, you know, get into that pastry and, and, and learn those basics. Michael, we, we can't taste your roux with your milk and vanilla added into it. it. It's just completely all wrong and would be inedible. You know, you've got your own signature just coming next yeah. and um, it's going to have to be a good one, Michael. Yep. You don't know how to make this mousseline. You didn't throw your hands up in horror. You kept a smile on your face and you did what you could. And I admire you for it. We'll see you in the next round. Cool. Thank you. Well, that couldn't have gone any worse. That was awful. My brain just went and... I was always dreading a pastry <laughs> and I got a pastry. Onwards and upwards, so don't look back. Last in is 27-year-old Killian, currently chef de partie in a restaurant cafe in London. I've been a chef since I was 17, working in a hotel and then working in Michelin-star restaurants. Right now, I'm kind of focusing on working with the best chefs in the UK and just still trying to learn my craft. My friends and family, they always tell me, you always talk about food, nothing else. It's because I love food. I'm confident, I'm raring to go, so I'm mentally prepared for this. Now, it's just getting into that competition and then winning the competition. That's it. That is it. Killian, how are you? I'm excited, ready to go. 20 minutes, off you go. I'm going to whisk the egg yolks and then um, add sugar and whisk to light sabion, and then add the flour. Right, so you on the way, looking good. Yep. You've done a bit of pastry. I have, not a lot, but I can do the basics. Well done, chef, keep going. Your passion for food killing, where's it come from? Uh, from my parents. My dad was Caribbean, my mum is Scottish. Caribbean food is what I always grew up eating. So, creme pat is made? Yep. And for the mousseline? For the mousseline, I think I've got to add butter, I believe. Oh. Why have you added the cream? 
Um, I think I've made a I've made a slight error. I think. I think. Can you fix it somehow? Come on, Gillian. Think like a chef. Is that is that working with the butter and the ice? Is that thickening up? I think so. Yeah, I think I've got where I want to be. Well done. Done? Yeah, all done. You okay? Yeah, better now. <laughs> better. To start with, you had to make a base of cream patisserie, and you did that. Mm -hmm. Really impressed to, to see. And then you added the cream to it. You can add cream to this to lighten the mousse, but you need to whip the cream first. It is not the mousse that I wanted you to make, but I think you, you gave it a good attempt. What we're looking for is a much thicker, slightly richer mousseline. Having said that, it, it is smooth, it's sweet. So overall, not a bad attempt, Killian. Thank you very much. It's not a mousseline but it's a very, very good cream pat. It's sweet, it's creamy, and it's got bundles of vanilla, so well done. We'll see you in the next round, thank you. Thank you. I am happy with what I did, obviously. I could have done a little bit better, but I'm going to show all my flair and my skills in the, in the, next, in the next challenge. Do you know what is glaringly obvious? Is with all the passion and desire, there is no substitute for knowledge. When you have your foundations right, you know, you've got something to work from. You just can't take shortcuts and you can't cheat it because this is when we discover their weaknesses and also how they cope under pressure. I look at the Christian as being the standout cook in the kitchen. Uh, the other five, they've all got good bits, they've got some errors in there. But it's their signature dish next. So it's really all about how they want to showcase their foods. What we do know is everything can change in the next round. Everything. Chefs, welcome back. This is your signature dish round. If you did well in the skills test, continue to improve upon that. If you didn't do so well, leave it behind you. Focus on the cooking today. There's some fantastic looking ingredients on your benches there, and I'm really excited now to see you cook your food. One hour and 15 minutes, one fantastic dish. At the end of this, chefs, three of you will be leaving us. Off you go. If I could impress the judges after my performance in the skill test, that would be brilliant. I want to show them that I can cook, and I can only go up now, can't I? I can't go down anymore, so... <laughs> How are we doing, Michael? Yeah, I'm good. I'm going to do a roast uh, lamb cannon with um, asparagus, carrots, roasted uh, prisian potatoes, pea puree and mint. And I'm making a reduction of lamb sauce and then I'll finish it with some red currant jelly and fresh mint right at the end. Are these ingredients that, that you grew up with? The lamb's all I had when I was a kid, so... so and asparagus is literally grown in a field near me. And the same with the carrots from the countryside, so... That sounds great. What's it going to take for you to really stand out with this dish? It may sound really simple, but this is the food I like and the food I cook, and I do believe in it, so I hope that will come across on the plate of food. All right, go for it, Michael. Michael's cooking the lamb cannon, and he's taking the bones off and he's just keeping the, the cannon, which is a beautiful piece of meat. I would have preferred that he kept the, the bones on it, but he's taking them off to add them to his sauce. He has to be careful that he looks after it because it can overcook very quickly. 
The amount of fat that it leaves on the lamb is also very, very important. It needs to make sure that it's beautifully coloured and rendered down. There's no great surprise here, so Michael's got to cook great ingredients to their best. I would definitely say I'm ambitious. You know, I think you have to be in this industry because there's so many people fighting for the top spot that you really need to focus and try and be the best in that room. How are we doing, Olivia? Yeah, good. You look very organised. I like your tray there with your little garnishes and vegetables all set aside. W what is your dish? Um, so I'm going to do butter roasted turbot, broccoli and wild garlic puree, and then I'm going to poach some yellow courgettes, broccoli shoots, samphire. I'm going to finish it off with some crisp chicken skin and a chicken butter sauce. Why this dish as, as your signature dish in this round? Um, I think it shows off me best, and I really like to eat it, which I think is really, really important when you're kind of cooking a dish that you should like to eat every element. Olivia is cooking us butter roasted turbots. Turbot is one of the most expensive fish that you can get. She's got to do it justice and really cook it to perfection. Olivia's sauce for her turbot is a brown chicken sauce. It will bring a contrast of flavour and colour to the dish. You don't want a sauce that's too strong if you're going to use a meat base for, for a fish dish. And I think what she's chosen is just right. 20 minutes gone and the smells are making me salivate. Well done, chefs. Competing against the best chefs in the country is obviously it's a big, big challenge. But I feel like it's my time to shine. I just want to cook my best food. That's my end goal. Gillian, some great ingredients on your bench. So what is it you're going to be cooking for us? Um, so I'm going to cook you a roasted rump of lamb uh, with braised peas and baby jam, a fondant potato and a red wine sauce. This is a dish that you've been um, practising? Uh, I've been practising it for the last two years. Have you been planning MasterChef for two years? I wouldn't say I've been planning it, but I've always wanted to be on the competition, but never had the opportunity to get on here. But now I'm here. I mean, the expectations just gone through the roof. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, more pressure, but I'm ready for it. Killian needs to be very careful with that lamb rump. Always with lamb rump, you need to render the fat down. It's going to be quite tough sometimes, but it also needs a good time to rest. Really intrigued in how the balance of his red wine sauce is, is, is going to be. Possibly, I think we have maybe one or two lamb dishes with a red wine sauce that, that's worked, and that's of many. I prefer my lamb juice with white wine, so Killian has really got to get this right. My signature dish today is lemon sole dressed in a Basque sauce with a hazelnut crust. Inside a papillot and a parcel with dauphine potatoes, pea shoot salad and forage sea herbs. This is kind of the greatest hits of a lot of my dishes and if everything comes together it should be smashing. Christian, what does this dish say about you? This is my personality on a plate. The papillot I've uh, learnt in France. Um, when I was in the south of France, I was in the Basque country. So we used a sauce with a spice called Piment d'Espelette. And we used to just call it Basque sauce. And it's got quite a sweet flavour to it, so it works well with the hazelnuts and the sea herbs. Southwest of France, Basque, were you in Biarritz? Yeah, I was a keen surfer, so I worked in some really cool restaurants. Um, and it really reminds me of, of my summers down there, so I'm hoping to bring a bit of that to the table today. Mate, you're selling it to me. Cooking sole and papillot is all about timing. The fish is wrapped inside a paper parcel of greaseproof paper with all the seasoning and the juices and that beautiful hazelnut crust sitting in there. It's gently baked and then presented in front of the customer. So basically, he will not know whether it's cooked or not until he opens it in front of us. 30 minutes left, please. It's nerve wracking. There's a lot of good chefs out there at the moment. You know, if I get past a couple of them today, it'd be fantastic for me to build confidence in myself and uh, just knowing that I can do really good food. So what's your signature dish? Uh, so it's lamb loin, uh, so it's sous vide and then pan fry it with asparagus, peas, uh, glazed onions and lamb sauce with tomato dressing. A, a tomato dressing? The tomato dressing is made from like plum tomatoes as well as Dijon mustard, French mustard and English mustard, which will hopefully all incorporated into one, one dish. 
What is it about this dish, Andy, that's going to really set it apart? As we have a few other lamb dishes going on in the kitchen. You want, you basically want more in my eyes. You go for one mouthful, then you're going to go for one other mouthful, and then another mouthful. So hopefully my dish will do that for you today. Andy's dish, another lamb dish. It's the third lamb dish in the kitchen today. But the difference is that Andy is using a water bath. Reason for sous vide and water bath is to relax and to cook it perfectly well. All he needs to do now is just roll it in the pan, add a little bit more flavour to it, but look after it and rest it well. Andy has a tomato dressing going with the dish. If he was doing more sort of Provencal flavours, then, yeah, the tomato would completely fit in with the lamb dish. But he's serving it with asparagus and peas. So I'm not sure how this is coming together. You have 15 minutes left, please. 15. Neil's dish is a squat pigeon breast. He's serving this with juniper jus, some braised baby leeks, sautéed mushrooms. He's also got poached quail's eggs on the dish, purple kale, chicken mousse, black truffle puree and pine nuts. Wow, he has got a lot going on with this dish. He's really going to need to work fast to get this dish looking good and tasting better. Tell me about the inspiration behind the dish. For me, this dish represents the forest. Uh, living in Wales at the moment, there's some lovely forest areas around us, and uh, being able to go and forage in these, in these areas is just fantastic. It's lovely produce, and it's right on our doorstep. How good has it now got to be to reverse what happened in the first one? Oh, round? it's got to be the best you've, you've tasted all day for me to get back from that skills test. You seem to have more to do than everybody else. So can you get this done? I can, yes. But it's a push, it's right? It's a push, but I'm going to get it done. I think in a competition like this, you've, you've got one shot to show what you can do. And uh, after the skills tests, it would mean the world to me just for them to smile at my food, you know, just for them to enjoy what I've cooked. It would mean the world to me. You have five minutes, chefs, please. Just five minutes. The lamb, just a little bit overcooked. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with all the other elements. Two minutes, please, chefs. My lamb just needs to be a bit more cooked. You have a minute. You have one minute. That is all you have. Come on, Neil. Kill him, kill him. Where's, where's your lamb? Ready to go, chef. Come on, come on, 30 seconds. Stop! Time's up. First is Christian, whose signature dish is lemon sole cooked en papillote with a hazelnut crust, a Basque pepper sauce, and sea herbs. Served with a pea shoot salad, pomme dauphin, and a salt and vinegar seasoning. <coughs> I particularly like that. Basque sauce you've got, there's a slight sweetness to it, and that's a lovely match with that hazelnut nuttiness. However, there are parts of this plate where you've been too heavy-handed with that vinegar powder, and it is actually making me wince. The rest of it, I think, is delightful. The fish is nicely cooked. I love the Basque sauce. Yeah. It's delicious. Uh, the pomme dauphin, for me, it's just a little bit on the heavy side of the potato, but I like your combinations. They're interesting, they're intriguing, really good. Thank you. So pleased you didn't overcook the fish and the papillot. It just falls away. Definitely be careful with the vinegar powder, but really impressed with how this dish has come together. Thank you very much. I think the judges saw exactly what I was trying to do. Hopefully, just the negative points don't hold me back, but we'll have to wait and see. Michael is serving roast lamb cannon with Parisian potatoes, 
silver skin onions, asparagus, carrots, broad beans, a pea puree, and a red currant and mint jus. For me, I find the lamb is overcooked, but I get the idea of the roast dinner here. Roasted potatoes are nicely cooked and they've got the crispness to them. I like the hints of the mint through it, but the sauce is, is too heavy and too sweet for me. But I think great effort and fantastic comeback after the first round. I think this is a nicely flavoured dish. Your lamb could be a bit pinker but your mint through the jus and your little roasties and your choice of veg, I think, are lovely. Thank you. <laughs> Michael, I had to worry about the red currant jelly running through the sauce, and I was right, you've just gone a little bit heavy on it, unfortunately. So you, you're making the dish very, very sweet. Love the roast potatoes, love your vegetable cookery, and I love your fight. Thank you. Well yeah. done. Yeah. I'm really happy because the comments were good. It's just I didn't quite nail the lamb, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Andy's signature dish is pan-fried lamb loin, served with peas, broad beans, asparagus and glazed onions, with a tomato and mustard dressing, finished with a lamb and port sauce. The lamb is nice and pink. I like the way the asparagus has a bite. The sauce for me is, is so sweet, I can't get the lamb flavour. It's nice, plate of food, Andy. I'm not wowed by it. Thank you. What I was really hoping for was a little point of difference, a little something that was like, oh, wow. And I thought that was going to be your tomato sauce with the mustard going through it. For me, the, the two sauces don't work together on the plate because you lose one, and that was the tomato one. It gets lost in the wetness of the port sauce. Good touch, great textures. I'd like some more seasoning on my lamb, and I'm not convinced by this free mustards that's with the tomato. Thank you. Some negative responses and some positive, but it was just the silly little mistakes. That I, um, a sweet sauce uh, with lamb doesn't go and that's the feedback they gave me, and, I'm, it's, and I take it on board. Olivia is serving butter roasted turbot with a garnish of yellow courgettes, sprouting broccoli, charred white asparagus, crispy chicken skin, and sea herbs on a bed of wild garlic and broccoli puree, finished with a chicken butter sauce. Wow, what a dish full of flavour. The broccoli wild garlic puree underneath really sets the tone for this dish. It's got a real big, bold flavour. Your vegetable cookery and the choice of them, absolutely brilliant, because they all work in harmony with each other. Love the chicken skin, it works a treat. You've got a good, thick sauce, so it wraps around everything and really makes everything taste absolutely delicious. I am a big fan of this dish. I think it's absolutely sensational. What you've shown here is that you can cook, you know, you've got style. The sauce is rich and creamy. You know what, Mrs, I think you've done a great job here. You know, go girl. That's a really lovely dish cooked, in my opinion, by someone with real skill. I, I think that's an absolute delight. Feeling good. Um, you know, judges' comments, I couldn't really have asked for much better, so that's really, really positive. Next is Killian, whose dish is roast rump of lamb, topped with pea shoots, served with braised baby gem lettuce and peas, fondant potato, and a red wine sauce. OK, 
Gillian, I think that um, the lamb, it's just not cooked enough. When it's not cooked enough, especially with the rump, it's incredibly tough uh, and very difficult to eat. I like your red wine sauce, but I do not like it with this dish. It's really just taking over the whole flavour of the plate of food, unfortunately. Your fondant potato is cooked, but only just. Not as buttery and soft as I would expect a fondant to be. Peas and, and the braised jam, beautiful. But clearly, you didn't get the meat cooked in time, which is such a shame, Killian, because this is a beautiful cut. I really like the ideas, but the execution is off. OK. Thank you. Obviously, mixed reviews. You know, I had a good skills test, and my signature dish just didn't come up to par. I could have just cooked my lamb a bit more, but let's just see what happens. Finally, it's Neil, who is serving squab pigeon. Pigeon legs stuffed with chicken mousse, a braised baby leek, sautéed mushrooms, silver skin onions, black truffle puree, a deep-fried quail's egg, and a juniper jus. Did you get everything on the plate that you wanted to? Uh, unfortunately, I left off the, uh, the kale, the big purple kale. I love the cookery of the pigeon. It's beautiful and tender, off the bone. Uh, the leg, I can see the point of adding chicken mousse into it. It didn't really bring anything to the table. Your vegetable cookery, your mushrooms, your little onions are delicious. There's a one thing on the plate that I don't think should be there, and that's the quail egg. This is a pigeon dish, and it really doesn't need that egg. And I think you're just trying too hard. But I think you've done an absolute excellent job here, Neil. I really do. Thank you very much. Wow, such a change from the terrified chef we saw in the first round. The amount of work is extraordinary. I like the way you've cooked the pigeon, really, really nice and pink. I like the stuffed leg as well. But the truffle and the juniper sauce is too heavily seasoned for me. Neil, you're a young chef who's showing a lot of skills on here. Allow yourself more time to finish your plate. Because rushing around, you end up missing things that I think are essential, because that kale would be wonderful on here. But I think for a signature dish, really pleased to meet you. Uh, I'm feeling a lot better now after that. It was surreal, honestly. Uh, I mean, bringing the plates up and then just tasting it and smiling was just such a heartwarming feeling. It was incredible. I enjoyed that. I think I enjoyed tasting it a lot more than I'm going to enjoy making this decision. Standout chefs for you? Olivia, definitely one of them. Olivia's turbot. Oh, lovely, wasn't it? Great flavours, beautiful cookery. That chicken butter sauce was banging on the door of divine. Christian with the papillotes had fantastic mm. flavours. The fish cookery is a massive risk when you're cooking on papillotes, and he did that beautifully well. He's got to be careful with the seasoning with that vinegar powder, which really got us, but I think it's a forgivable error because there's so much that I liked about his plate. We know the two going straight through. We're now left with Killian, Neil, Michael and Andy. Can I start with Michael, please? Personally, I've got a real soft spot for lamb and mint sauce and roast potatoes, and that's what he delivered. Roast potatoes were excellent. The vegetable cooker was very, very good. The, the sauce was too sweet for my liking. The lamb, for me, was overcooked. I thought Killian was going to really march on from his decent skills test and deliver us a plate that would put him straight through. And now, I'm not too sure. Really like the, the garnish of the braised gem lettuce and, and the peas. Very disappointed with the cooking of the lamb. That sauce was so big and heavy, it just sort of knocked the dish completely off the plate. Andy, he cooked lamb really well. He cooked the vegetables really well. He made a port sauce, but he also then made a mustard sauce that was sharp and sweet and I didn't particularly like. I think the mustard sauce with the tomato would have been the surprise element of the dish and I felt that that just sort of let him down. 
Neil's dish was good. I mean, I didn't see this coming from this young chef after the skills test. I love the pigeon cookery, the vegetables on the plate, the sauce. The truffle could have had a touch more flavour to it, but I did enjoy it. It didn't need to have a chicken mousse. It didn't need to have a quail egg. But what was there was delicious. I've had a taste for this and I'd love to go as far as possible. If I got free, I'd push myself even more. It would be sad to go home. I'd be heartbroken. I've got so much more drive and so much more passion and so much more ideas to show, to bring to competition. I don't want this journey to end, so hopefully we'll just see what happens. If I got a second chance, it'd be out of this world, but, you know, it, I could actually probably cook the lamb properly this time. <laughs> Listen, it was a great day. Tough for some of you, especially in the beginning, but great to see you come back in this kitchen fighting. The first two chefs going through are Olivia and Kristen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well done, guys. We've got one more place to give. The chef going through is Neil. Well done, Neil. Michael, Andy, Killian, well done. Good competition. Thank you for your, all your hard work. Good chefs. I'm gutted to be going home, but I'm very proud to be fair. Like, I wouldn't have ever done anything like this before, and I think putting yourself out there is quite a big thing, really. It's been a rocky road, you know, but I'm very lucky to be here today. Obviously, I, I just came up short. It's not at this point, yeah, but the better chefs went free. So, you know, you got to give them credit as well. Well done, guys. We did it! Oh, I just overwhelmed with joy because I didn't think it would turn out that way. <laughs> uh, I got through by the skin of my teeth today, and I think uh, they're going to get tougher, so I need to knuckle down and put up some good food. I feel great. I think the judges really understand what I was trying to do. It's nice to get some recognition and um, hopefully I can get some more. I think it's kind of a massive weight lifted off your shoulders. It's been a long day. It's been tough here in the kitchen and I'm super happy to be going through. Next time, it's the quarter final and the best chefs return to prove they have what it takes. I really think that you pushed yourself here today. Those who deliver will earn the right to cook for the critics. This is a truly exceptional dish.